so welcome to everybody who, who may have just arrived in the last the last couple of moments i can see the numbers slightly creeping up on the attendance list so good good to see you all um good afternoon good morning depending where you are around the world good to see you um so we'll make a start so um roland could you uh go to the next slide please brilliant so um there are four of us who will be leading the session today um i'm Catherine anderson just over on the right hand side of the screen there um physical geographer, but interested very much in um, science communication and I work a lot with, with creating material for, for school children and education. Um, but we also have, I might as well go right to left on the screen, we also have Juliet, who will be speaking a little bit later on. She works uh, a lot with creating story maps for professionals and volunteers using um, narratives, storylines and things like that. We have Emanuele, he has podcasts, blogging sites, especially linked to, to things like water security. And finally, we have Roland, who is our video making aficionado, um, absolute master in video making, storytelling for science communication. So there'll be four of us running the session today, uh, but it's very much an interactive webinar. So we encourage posting ideas, thoughts, especially in, in the WhatsApp group as well. Um, it's very much a hands-on session, so you'll be getting to grips with uh, not only the theory, but also the hands-on part of, of video making. Uh, next slide, please, Roland. Great. Um, so there'll be kind of five blocks to, to, the, to the webinar today. The first one will just set the scene. We'll give you some, some elements of what makes a blog, what is, what is a vlog in itself. And we'll look at the key elements to a successful vlog. And then we'll get right down into um, how we go about making plot lines, tips for, for videoing things. And then it will be very much over to you and your turn to start producing your very own vlog. We'll watch it back. We'll get some ideas, get some discussion going. And um, next, next slide, please. Okay, brilliant. So I'll just spend a moment or two thinking about the purpose of vlogs, why we would want to create a vlog in the first place and what they actually are. So the challenge through today's session is really to get to grips with with vlogging. Um, I was a complete new person to this a couple of weeks ago, uh, quite daunting to start off with. But once I got into it through the, the helpful advice of Roland, it was really actually quite a fun process. So we're going to transfer that to you guys today. So things we want to think about are how you could record a video using your phone. We don't need any fancy equipment necessarily. We can focus in on individual objects that are just sat around on your desk. We then also want to think about how this might be structured in terms of a beginning, a middle and an end to make a, a coherent, engaging package of a, of a vlog. Next, please, Roland. Before I do next, uh, Catherine, because this is a, a vlogging session and also about cameras, uh, when I look at you, I only see you from uh, your eyes. And you're a little bit, your camera's a little bit. Uh... Yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. Is that yeah. better? Well, you can see my full face it. now. <laughs> yes, uh, try to do this on the right way. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So first we want to think about what is a vlog? Uh, what does that word actually mean? So according to a dictionary definition of that, it's a record of thoughts, opinions, experiences that you would then film and then upload onto the internet so there's been a real rise in this um worldwide i think covering a whole a whole host of topics and it's certainly something that younger generations are really getting into as well it's a very quick way of communicating with different audiences and engaging them in a way that um, maybe meets them on various different levels so that we can um, really get that rapport going with them next slide please Roland. So in contrary to things like written um, communication, for example, or much larger uh, documentary style videos, blogs are a quite a unique way of, of engaging with your audience. They're, they're often quite um, quick to produce. Uh, the message is often quite condensed. So in terms of um, providing a platform through which to communicate with other audiences, it's quite impressive. A Couple of things that we would then need to think about. Um, as we are producing our vlogs is, is what do we want to get out of that? And so here's just a word cloud over on, on the right hand side. And through the course of the session today, we'll deal with a lot of these, these ideas. So I won't, I won't run through them all just now, um, but we want to think about what do we actually want to get, get out of this. Next slide, please, Roland. 
So we're going to just start off and ha have a quick look at, at this particular video. Uh, and while we do this, we want to think about a few a few questions. So who who is the vlogger here? Who is the person doing the vlogging? Uh, what's the takeaway message from this video? Um, how did you feel when you watched it? So I watched this a little bit earlier on and there was one little part of this that really stuck out to me. I don't know why it just really hit me the most out of the whole video. So have a think about what do you remember the most? Feel free to type this into the WhatsApp, the chat, jot this down. Uh, and it's all things that we can we can get these ideas going and start to pull this apart a little bit later on. When you're ready, Roland, please. Thanks. I am. I am the earth. I have thousands of faces and colors. I am black, yellow, white, red, gold. When I get angry, I am the color of fire. Sometimes I am hard, sometimes I am fragile. In the desert, I become infinite. I kiss the sky when I become a mountain. I am a nomad, an explorer, a traveler. Sometimes I want to escape, so I become dust to dance with the winds. With human beings, I have a special relationship. Your children come to meet me for their first steps. Your elder people come to me for a long and peaceful sleep. I offer you flowers, plants and trees with delicious fruits. I wish we could have that beautiful relationship again. I am the Earth. Thanks, Roland. Uh, next slide, please. Perfect. So hopefully that kind of started to get you thinking a little bit more about, about vlogging, um, the content of the video, the, the messages that come across and how that's actually um, portrayed to you. Other things that we'll we'll start to, to deal with over the course of today, and I'll, I'll soon hand over to Juliet, who'll, who'll go into this in, in a little bit more detail. Um, but we're aware that, that creating videos can be quite daunting to a lot of people, me included, until a couple of weeks ago when we, we got into this in, in a bit more um, in a bit more detail. But questions like, you know, and I'm sure we often all think of this when, when we embark on these kind of science communication endeavors, things like what do we include? What kind of language should I be using to communicate with the audience? What software will I use to edit this down? Uh, what's the story? Will people understand it? Will they find it a little bit too boring or maybe too technical? Um, all these things that are, are kind of in our brains when we start on any kind of uh, science R interface, especially as academics, it's often um, a bit of an unusual thing to be doing. Next slide, please, Roland. We also want to think about who are we actually aiming these vlogs for? Are they policymakers? Are they professionals? Are they the wider public? Are they children? Um, what kind of background do they have? What kind of age group might they be? And again, things that, that we will we'll deal with uh, through the course of today. Next slide, please, Roland. So we've, we've talked about you know, what this might entail, who are we actually going to, um, to try and target with our vlog, but also what do we want to get out of that? So are we hoping that people will become more interested in, in our topic? Do we want to open up a dialogue, a conversation with a new audience or an existing audience, but perhaps in a different way? Uh, do we want to connect with larger, communi larger communities? Do we want to promote some kind of behavioral change with the audience as well? Um, and really starting to, to drill down what specifically are we aiming for here? And again, all these questions will, will bear in mind as you start to create your own vlogs later. Next, please, Roland. Okay, so I'll hand over to, to Juliet here. We'll do a series of interactive questions through the course of, of the session. Uh, so over to you, Juliet. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so we just have a, a few questions so that you can connect in Mentimeter. 
uh, with your phone. So just uh, go to this uh, mentiminti menti.com. And, uh, and uh, type the code that is there. Uh, so, so I hope that you all have done it. I'm also doing it myself. Um, then I will just move to the next slide. And then there are a few questions about your experience. So we have three people now uh, having experience with the video phone and also with tell telling stories. Most of you have experience with sharing in social media, so that's really good. Uh, I think that we had around, around 10 participants, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so please uh, keep the Mentimeter code there. Uh, so here, what it is good is that uh, it seems that many of us have experience with, uh, with video making and sharing. So your tips are also welcome to, to be part of this session uh, because certainly you are representatives of the audience as well. Um, so, uh, uh, regarding the key story elements. So we have basically uh, the solution, the a problem of dilemma, it is the first of them. We also have uh, the solution or takeaway message. Uh, we have certainly a setting, uh, the characters of the plot or sequence of events. Um, so regarding the, the setting, um, I will ask you, uh, Roland, to play this, uh, this video so that we can ask participants to think first, uh, uh, what is the setting that is here? If it can be also related with the study of our research or the place where we carry out our research. So please, Roland, play the video. Guadalajara, Mexico, 1953. During a break from his expedition collecting insects, Field Museum Research Associate Dr. Charles H. Sievers was perusing an antique store when he came across a most unusual specimen. It was this alien-looking creature with sunken eyes, a protruding mouth and horns, and a long barbed tail. Is it a demon baby, a fallen angel, or the spawn of Satan? Nope, it's just a fish. Since the 16th century, sailors and seaside dwellers have been selling the manipulated figures of certain cartilaginous fishes like skates and rays to tourists. They were marketed to oddity collectors as devilfish or dragons and became known as Jenny Hanivers, thought to be a misinterpretation of the French phrase Jeune d'Anvers or young person of Antwerp. Many of these devil babies are made from guitar fish, a kind of ray in the family Rhinobatidae, which today live along beaches and coastlines and in estuaries. The practice of selling their disfigured bodies to tourists has declined in recent years due to conservation protections around these remarkable fish. But thankfully, due to museums, you could say this legacy still has legs. So here it is, was just a video to show you how first uh, an object may change over, over the, the uh, course of the story and how we can have different settings, including the imagined one, the one that the, the vlogger imagines. Next, uh, Roland, please. Next Guadalajara, slide. Mexico, 1953. Um, so regarding the, the problem or dilemma. So many of us are in a problem, address a problem or dilemma with the research. Uh, so, for example, in the first video, the problem was certainly uh, related to the earth. In the second one, it was certainly related about, about water conservation. Um, sorry, about species and endangered conservation. Then I would like to start making you ask you to, to think about the, the problem of your own research, because it's actually your research that we are going to communicate. And then I will ask you uh, next the next slide, uh, Roland. Uh, to think what is the problem of dilemma on, on this block that we have here. Roland, please go ahead. Scientists often think that facts are the most important thing when they tell about their work. But most people, including scientists, 
Don't get fascinated until you tell stories about real people, about the effort they have to make to get a glass of water. My name is Roland Postma. I've been making video stories about science for a long time, for kids and for adults. I want to show you that with a little creativity, telling a video story with your mobile about your own research is almost as simple as drinking a glass of water. Thank you very much, Roland, for the video. <laughs> so I will take over the screen, uh, then that uh, uh, you can you can answer the next uh, Mentimeter question that it is actually about your research. Um, so in three keywords, please share with us what is the problem or dilemma that you would like to share in your blog. So in the examples that we just saw, there was one about air degradation, one about water scarcity, and one about endangered species. So which one is yours? So we have here, Blogging, uh, system change, uh, climate in general, and water in general. So we have say, six responses. Mm. Then uh, glaciers. Uh, let me see if there is some sea level rise. Uh, any last one before passing to the next slide? Okay. So collaboration. Let me see what happened. Okay, next slide. So if your audience would only have 10 seconds to look at your blog, write in max 20 words why they should care about this problem. And then I give you the example. Uh, so Roland mentions that the scientists think that facts are the most important aspect to tell about our research. Um, the Earth, who was the blogger, told us the, uh, they provide us with many benefits from we are born until we die. And uh, the famous blogger that we shared in the, in the blog about endangered species, she told us that they are so usually sold to tourists. So what would you like to take to your audience in 10 seconds and 20 words? Maybe would you like to share it with us? It's important to realize this, the video we are going to ask you to make in 10 minutes. So anything you write is, is, is good to start because it is, it's actually starting thinking about your own blog and nothing is wrong or, or uh, So start with a visual hook supported by the text. That's what we'd like to take the, the, the audience. Water is fundamental to life on earth, but too much too little can cause problems. Supporting solving grad challenges, help scientists to the scientists. It affects all of us. Okay. Um, so let's go um, to the solution or takeaway message. So basically, uh, when we talk about this problem, we also have a takeaway message for our audience, and this is what we would like them expect, what we will expect them to do with our research findings or with our work. So the question it is, if you certainly have again 20 words and 10 seconds with your audience, what type of solutions you propose with your research and what can your audience do with it? And then of course, uh, we have Roland who told us that uh, telling stories about real people and their relationship with the problem can be like drinking a glass of water. It was the earth who told us that uh, it is time to reconsider uh, our relationship with the earth and the way that we take care of it. And uh, it was the famous blogger who told us that when finding an endangered species on a beach, a coastline, uh, we can choose to preserve it. What about you? But I, can th I think, Juliet, we can give them a few minutes to think about it, this, because this is, this is where the workshop is starting. So think about what you really want to tell in the next uh, half hour. Anyone who wants to just give a, give a long shot? And I gave everybody the opportunity to talk to us. So if you want to share your thoughts with us on audio, you can do that. So uh, just unmute yourself and uh, ask questions, give comments, because uh, we try to make it a little bit more interactive.
Well, certainly this is one of the most difficult questions to answer by ourselves, and I don't expect you to answer it in five seconds. But as Roland says, I really expect you to think about this answer uh, when planning and recording about your vlog. Uh, going back to the presentation, uh, Roland, if you will please share the screen. Uh, but you are sharing what? Uh, okay, okay. Well, I think share. it's good to, to see a little bit what people are going to uh, answer in the. Oh, okay, yeah, they are. Of course, they're going to respond. They have some time to do that. Uh, okay, okay. So let me see. It's not about your solution, boring, but about your adventure to find it through. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very good one. It is time to reconsider about that. We check it national, Nordic, and international knowledge exchange related to EPOS. Uh, there is a necessity to start to think about the actual role of a public water utility to address the water access to the vulnerable. Okay. But I would like to comment to all these uh, first suggestions now, is if you really want to make a short vlog of one minute about this, then some of the uh, solutions are very, very, very broad. So if you uh, want to make a... a a short video of one minute uh, and 15 seconds, then I think you should try to think, can we be a little bit more concrete or a little bit more to the point and a little bit more filmable? <laughs> Let me see. I'm just also trying to open here the comments. Environment, environmental and behavioral chain communication and strategies towards improving water usage. Okay. Uh, we have eight responses. Um, well, uh, due to time, uh, I will move back to the presentation and then uh, introduce the next part, that is the, the character or the agent, agent. So certainly it is not limited uh, to the protagonist of the story. And we can decide to tell about uh, objects that transform throughout the story, but we can also decide to tell about adventures or even problems that we have with our own research. The important uh, aspect of a blog, as its definition says, is that we try to share uh, our experiences, personal perspective, thoughts and opinions and relationships uh, with that problem and that solution. Uh, and I think that uh, with this, I would like to, uh, to give the, the floor to Roland, who is going to tell us about the plot and the tips for shooting the story. So actually the, the plot is a sequence with ups and downs that reflect the order in which the characters' events takes place. So Roland, floor, uh, floor is yours. Okay. Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Roland Posma and I was introduced uh, already. I'm making videos and for science programs for a long time. And uh, I also give a lot of training to people, also to scientists about uh, vlogging and making short stories. And uh, in fact, it's very easy to, uh, to vlog. So uh, we're going to do that in the next, uh, how much time do we still have in the next uh, hour? We're going to uh, we're going to do that, and we're going to help you with it with that. So I hope you prepare to to do that, and I will give you a few basic rules and a few basic. And if you understand that, I always say to people, I can explain what you need to know in about ten minutes. I'm going to try to do that in ten minutes, and after, if you really understand what I'm going to say in the next ten minutes and are able to uh, to do it, then. Uh, you're a perfect vlogger, so it's not, uh, it's for most people, not so uh, difficult. Your screen. Hi. So the basic, the basic rule is tell stories because uh, people do that uh, as long as there are human people, they tell stories. And why do they tell stories? And why are uh, stories so powerful? Well, the most important thing is people remember stories way better than facts and figures. So telling a story will help people to remember it. Uh, stories will also make a message more unique. And stories will create, an, a more, most of the time stories are much more emotional because good, most of the good stories are about people, not about facts, not about Nature, not about, they are about people. <laughs> um, and also very important reason to tell stories, our stories are shared. And that's also really important in this time of making videos. If your videos aren't shared, you're nowhere. So you have to make videos that are, are shared. But telling stories 
about your work, about science, is the basic thing uh, you have to do. Of course, it's not exclusive only for videos. You can, all, you can also do that for presentations, for writing uh, things. Stories are shared and stories are remembered. So then when we talk to scientists and especially if we talk to, uh, to also to scientists scientific uh, researches, etc. they always think that uh, facts and figures are very important. And of course they are. But first of all, what's really important to remember that you're making your video not for yourself, not for your colleagues, uh, but you're making videos for a more general audience. And you think you will say, no, I will make videos for my colleague science, scientists, but still your college scientists are also normal people and they like to hear stories. And it's really important to realize that you, as a narrator and as the maker of the video flow, you're not the audience. The audience is different than yourself. So before making a video, try to find out what, you really, what the audience really wants to know and what they know about the subject you're telling about. So it's all the time, realize your words, your concepts, your science is not the science, is not the knowledge of the people you're making a video for. That's rule number two, basic number two. Third basic, if your video doesn't uh, achieve something in the audience, if they don't feel something about your video, it's a waste of time because uh, most of of course, there are facts that's so important that people will notice them, but most of the time you have to, they have to feel something when they watch your video. They have to respond. They have to feel happy or surprised or angry or whatever. So always ask yourself when you're making a short video, well, how would the audience feel about this? Would they feel something about this? Basic number three. So, and then basic number four, especially if you make very short vlogs like this, for, for instance, uh, about your uh, presentation, uh, you only think about having only one clear message. What do you really want to tell? Not a very broad message, but clear. What do you want to achieve? What do you want your audience to feel or to do or to learn? And also in the today, videos are short. A special one minute is best, one minute 30 is a little bit, uh, uh, is already a little bit long. Um, and that, that sounds very uh, unpleasant, but uh, look at yourself. You're also sc scrolling like that through the videos on LinkedIn. You say, oh, four minutes now, I'm not going to watch that. Uh, only if you see one minute, maybe you will give it a try. So it's really important to keep your video short and tell a story. Back to the street. So, what is a good story? So, what is a good story? Well, of course, good story has a begin and has a, a middle and has an end. And that sounds very uh, stupid, but uh, it's really important to realize that you begin somewhere, there's a story, and you end. If you do it in a more graphical way, uh, you could, uh, it, it can look a little bit like that. Today, it's very important that in the first 10 seconds of your video, people are hooked to it. If they don't want to watch it, they decide in the first five to 10 seconds if they're going to watch your video. So don't start with logos, don't start with titles, don't start with all that kind of stuff. Just start with something that's that people really want to see and that will intrigue them to watch the video. Then you can build up a story and the story is something happening, something developing. People always say, I need images to tell my story. And I always say, no, you need something to happen uh, to, to make a story. Something is happening. So a challenge, a fight, uh, research, research, a question. For scientists, often starting with a good question, and trying to find the answer of the question in the, in the, in the video is a good uh, story, is a very good storyline, but there are many more storylines. But the basic thing is something is happening, you build up to a climax, and by the end, you give people time to digest it uh, a little bit. 
And, I, and sometimes by the end, you uh, can put a call to action. In your case, you're going to ask them to watch your presentation on the conference. You could also uh, say that with words, and that's sometimes easier to remember when you're making your video. First, you have to get attention. Hey, you there, look, and you tell a story. It is like this. This is the conclusion. This is the solution. This is what I want to tell you. Aha. So give them some time to get, get their aha. So I want to share a few very simple. Uh, now, maybe I go back. One second. Are there questions about it? Your, your audio is on. Are people who want to ask a question or comment on this? Because it's so silent, uh, I still hope there are people uh, really there. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, nobody. Okay, I will share the screen of my phone with uh, with you. The first decision. Roland, Roland, there is a question in the chat, and the question is, what is a good hook? What is a good hook? A good hook is something that uh, will people. You can make a visual hook, so the, the, the image you show is so exciting that people think, okay, oh, yeah, how is it going on? But a hook is something, the, the word says it, uh, says it already, a hook is something that will hook you to the story and will hook you to look at the rest of the, uh, the video. So it can be uh, anything, it's, it's difficult to say what is a good hook, uh, but a good hook is... Uh, you recognize a good hook when you when you see when you see one, because it's really think, what's going to um, to hook you. Can you think about the video of the um, about the fish. For me, there was a good hook. It was a bit dark. There was a bit of mystery. So you want to know mm, where is this leading? Yeah, I think that's mm, if you elicit the the curiosity. Indeed, you hook <laughs> your yeah. fish and you drag it with you. Yeah. If you think about the, the, the video of Roland, uh, he was showing us a, a photo of water scarcity and a glass of water. I was like, what is this? So for me, it was like confused and kind of surprised. And if you think about the earth, it was like making me feel like uh, who's talking? What does he want to say? Where are all these images? going to so it's something that surprised you something that is mysterious something that has an adventure inside something that your audience will say yeah. what is going on yeah and we had uh, we, we had uh, uh, the video about uh, i am earth that's also an interesting way to start a video with beautiful images and so that's also a reason to watch at the video so there can be very much reasons to a shocking fact, a shocking uh, number, a shocking can also be a good hook to start a, a video. And you see what good hooks are because if you uh, if you're on the website, you get a lot of advertisements for a lot of videos and uh, for a lot of information. And uh, they always try to get you into the video or into the information or into the website with a kind of uh, stupid. Uh, Hook. Any Does other it, question? Is there more questions? Because I cannot see the chat at this moment. Okay. Okay. So if you um, if you're going to start making a video, and you will start with that in a few minutes, um, then the first thing you have to answer for yourself, and I will, is: Do I going to film? horizontal or do I going to film vertical? Do I going to film in landscape mode or do I going to film in portrait mode? And um, why is that important? Because I think if you make a video more for websites and for YouTube or whatever, you should always film uh, in landscape mode. But if you make things for, for instance, for Instagram or TikTok or whatever, you can film turn your camera and do it in portrait mode. So that's a really first important question you have to answer. 
Then the second tip, a lot of uh, people, uh, and we're doing that, that also, if you're going to talk into the camera, uh, it's very important that you really look into the camera because now I'm not looking into the camera and I'm uh, looking at the screen. So if you're going to use your phone to film yourself, find the camera on the phone, oh, it's there. And if you really want to talk to the people, talk into the camera. And what a lot of people are doing, they're always checking on the screen for now, oh, how do I look? How do I look when they talk? And they forget, forget to look into the camera. If you really want to talk to people, look into the camera and talk to them because then you get contact instead of just checking out how your screen is. So that's the very second important uh, tip I want to give you. Then, um, I want to say a few things about, give me one second because I have so many screens I'm sharing at this moment that I lost a little bit track of it. So I'm going to share a screen of my phone with you. So you see my phone now. So, and I also demonstrated uh, that. So we have, you see my phone, I can turn it. And now you see if I'm looking, um, if I'm checking on the, on the screen, how do I look? I'm not looking into camera. So also here I have to find the right lens. If I really want to talk to you, I talk to you like this. I talk into the lens, I say hello. So important, talking to the lens. Then, besides landscape or landscape. So the other was, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, and then I said, uh, if you're going to, uh, what we want you to do, okay, turn the camera. I hope, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, you can still hear me, okay. So what we want you to do is take an object somewhere around you on, on your desk or in the, the room you're in and use that to tell a very short story about your research. If you don't have an object, um, don't worry too much, but still try to tell a short story about your research that will engage us. But you can also use, uh, for instance, a picture from uh, your screen, like this. So, now I bring you to, I bring you to Dhaka. And you see, I did, it made a lot of impression on me because I made a few stories about Dhaka and about rickshaw riders. So I can tell you a story about rickshaw riders using the rickshaw they gave me. But if you use an object, uh, the camera goes off. It's always a bit complicated like this. You see, I can do a little bit more. Ah, oh, interesting. It's going to switch completely. It does it automatically because I... Uh... So, so there are many ways to use your camera. So you can also tell a story a little bit like this about your research and say, oh, I was in Dhaka and I want to tell you something like that. So there are many ways to use the camera in a creative way uh, in the next uh, seconds to tell your story. I can also tell you a story about London and driving in black caps. Ah, it's changing, but... Uh... And of course, if you don't have an object at hand, well, just go to uh, go to your screen, and uh, I can take you to China. I can take you to Norway. I can take you uh, to India, Paris, and I tell you a story about the Eiffel Tower. So. So, the exercise now, 
do we have that on uh, do we have a slide with the exercise no okay so now so now it's your turn Roland, there's a question about the, um, if you can provide some terminology for the different camera angles. We're going technical. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't think it's a very interesting question. It is, when you study film theory, of course, you can, uh, you can talk about uh, close-ups and wide shots and medium shots and extreme close-ups, etc. But for now, we want you to make a very short story, one minute, using an object around you to tell your story and share it with us on Vimeo. So we can go into all technical details about uh, uh, shorts and about, but that's not the main thing. I think the main thing is uh, here for this, uh, for this workshop is try to get your story right. Uh, use an object. And why do we want you to use an object? Because otherwise it's is going to be very, uh, 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 what it's going to be words and it's going to be text, etc. So use a, an object in your room, and it's it's not really important uh, because you can connect almost every object to your research or to your adventure, to your story or whatever. But take something or take a picture and uh, make uh, a story. So and about all the different close-ups and camera move because you also have the camera movements like a zoom and tilt and etc but i don't think that's the, that's really important now i think what's really important that you start working on it and that you're going to make uh, roland how much time do we have for doing that uh, let's see uh, one second um, so your turn so make a story. Uh, well, how long do we have? Uh, I was talking, so I didn't keep track of your time. Emanuela, do you have much time do we have? Well, it's quarter to one. We still have 45 minutes, right? So we yeah. can take some 10 minutes to... No, I think longer First... than that. In fact, they have half an hour to do that. Uh, and then, but as soon as you start sharing a story, so film something on your mobile, don't hesitate to do it, film yourself, to do something. As soon as th those stories come in, we will, you, people will see them in the, in the WhatsApp group. And we, will... do we share it on Vimeo or in WhatsApp? Because we have the link to WhatsApp. Yeah, we will see it first in WhatsApp. And by the end, I will share all the videos on Vimeo. Okay. And maybe Roland, can you recall the um, the four basics? Because I remember emotions, and the facts is not a story. Yeah. Okay. I, you, and two more. Okay. Okay. You see, this is the four basics. Control F5. So, so first, tell a story, and the story is all. Most stories are about people or about, and the people can be yourself because doing research can be an adventure in itself. So telling about your problems with your research or the moment you had your uh, aha, alertness, then uh, or okay. something like that can be a good uh, story already. So tell a story, uh, that's basic one. Two, realize that the, the that you are not the audience and that the, most of the time the audience is not really interested in too much facts and don't share PowerPoint slides or uh, all those kind of difficult graphics that you put into your uh, research papers because people cannot see it on the screen and it goes too quick. And the third was emotion, really important. And don't make it too complicated. So the video I made for you was only to, to show you that uh, it's really important that facts are not so important. And uh, as soon as you connect facts to uh, really emotions of people, uh, that works better. Okay. 
So, any questions? Please use the chat or the or the. But start at. Uh, can we? Uh, in fact, I would like to hear from everybody if they can start now or that they have questions. So, get your phone. Okay. So, get your phone. I use it with a small tripod, but get your phone and start. And start shooting something and start sharing with us. I think it's also important to remind the the arc of the story that you showed the the beginning or hook, the middle, and a nice ending, which is not always easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could so think, but you can think about those three different parts. So the beginning, the middle, and the end. And I can, can give one tip for that. It, most of the time, the easiest thing is to start with the end, because just when you're walking into the mountains, if you know where you want to go, you can find a way to go there. But if you don't know where you want to go, finding the route is difficult. So decide what is your last where do you want to end or what do you want you to achieve with your video and start there is sometimes easier than uh, start with the beginning. <laughs> okay. Uh, Roland, I think it's important that to, because now people, I think maybe they will move yeah. in the room to record the video. So let's say that we try, we aim at being everyone back at the laptop uh, in 20 minutes so that we can watch and comment on the video. So at uh, 10 past one, please be back and with your video upload a shared on um, WhatsApp. And I, again, the, the link to WhatsApp, the WhatsApp chat here. Yes. In the chat. And I will put it on screen also. So, again, shoot your video and share it on WhatsApp. The link is on the left. If you have technical questions, why shooting? Of course, eh, we are here. What? If people have questions, technical questions about how oh, to... Of course, we are here. ...the video, we are here. Okay. And we know that uh, making your first video and sharing it with other people and being on the screen is always a little bit uh, frightening. People think it's not good enough or they're afraid it's not good enough, but uh, I think it's important just to start because the only way you learn to shoot videos and share them and tell stories is by shooting stories and shooting videos, sharing them, commenting on it, getting feedback and then go back to um, and make your next video.
Glasses exist in many parts of the world. Uh, for your inspiration, I want to share uh, in between uh, Catherine's video. She made uh, based on this uh, training, <laughs> her first video. So um, have a look. Glasses exist in many parts of the world. Some are large ice sheets like in Greenland and Antarctica. Others Hold are on. small mountain glaciers like in the Alps. We cannot see. With ongoing climate change, glasses worldwide under- You cannot see? No. no. Only audio. Hmm, strange. Mm. 
Do you see it now or not? Yeah, we can see it now. Yeah. Okay, we give it another try. Glasses exist in many parts of the world. Some are large ice sheets like in Greenland and Antarctica. Others are smaller mountain glaciers like in the Alps. With ongoing climate change, glasses worldwide undergoing major changes. Many are retreating rapidly and some will disappear in our lifetime. This will have massive impacts on meltwater downstream and sea level. I'm Catherine Adamson, a lecturer at Manchester Met University. My research uses geological evidence of past glacier and river behaviour so that we can understand how these systems responded to climate change in the past and therefore how they might respond to future environmental change. Glasses exist in many parts of the world. Okay. Oh, are there any comments on this video? Or um, does this inspire you to do? Roland, maybe we can also ask participants to make the video in front of us so we can help them out if any of them wants to try it out on their camera. Yeah. Can you explain I that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Utkir, uh, Remco, Puk, Paivi, Nicola, Lucy, any of you wants to try it out? Utkir said they're all busy with their videos. Sorry. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Good point. Okay, I, so we, we start. Uh, uh, she can mail it to, uh, she can retransfer it to me to, maybe it's too big for... Uh, Lucy, you can also play it and maybe share the screen, that would be also a possibility. Can I don't you? know. I, I don't have any options for anything like share and screen. No. I think I'm unrestricted because it's a webinar. Yeah, that's that's... That's not possible in this form of Zoom. You cannot share your 
attendees cannot share their screen. That's a little bit stupid. Uh, what is the best way? Uh, you can send it. Can you send it by mail or uh, or by by uh, we transfer or something like that? Uh, yeah, I should be able to send it by mail. Uh, if you put, is that your I uh, posted email Roland in? email Roland for your privacy. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's your. I don't care. I. Oh, oh no, it's wrong. Uh, in, uh, right. uh. In the meantime, maybe uh, you have the video of Utkir there. Info at mofiro.nl. You can send it to that. Um, okay, we see a, a second video. This is the video made by Utkir. So I see a video by Utkir. This is the water bottle that I have on my desk. It says, water is a human. Roland, can you shed the um, yeah? What do you want me to share the um, the video of Utkir. I think Utkir made Utkir, the video. Right. Let's start with that. But um, okay. Always a bit. Central so. Asia. But we don't see your screen, Roland. Oh, no, one second, because okay. I have to download it. So, um, <laughs> so in the meantime, Utke, can you briefly introduce yourself? Or you want to introduce yourself by with a surprise from the video? <laughs> oh, no, <clears throat> I can introduce myself. Uh, my name is Utke Adhamov. Uh, I come from Uzbekistan. And currently I study at IHE Delft. I am studying water governance and diplomacy. So, and uh, thank you very much for organizing this uh, event. Actually, uh, I am really interested in uh, vlogging. Now um, I am uh, doing some uh, photography and next step would be making um, uh, vlogs. So I am really keen on learning from all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Utkir. Yeah. Okay, I share a video from Utkir. Okay, do you see the video? Yes. Central Asia is at the edge of glaciers crisis. The glaciers of the region are melting, losing their weight and vanishing. Millions of people of the region rely on their water. However, the scientists argue that in a couple of decades coming, the people of Central Asia will not have enough water for their agricultural practices and daily use. In this video, I'm going to talk about why it is happening and how we should respond to mitigate the consequences. Stay with me. 
Glasses exist in many parts of the world. Oh. Some are large ice sheets, like in Greenland. Okay. Okay. We like. I really, um, I really liked that up here. I thought it was really good. And I, the bit I really loved was the bit at the end that says, stay with me. I feel like I'm really drawn in now to see what's next and to follow your story with that. I really love that bit. And how did you think his start was? I loved the start as well. That kind of just despair with the whole situation. Loved that. I could really feel the drama. Yeah. I, I, after watching it, I genuinely get the sense that I just want to, uh, I just want to hear more about your work and, and what's coming with that. Okay. And how could we improve it? Emanuela, how would you improve it? Mm, maybe you can add some images of glacier. For instance, from your, uh, from from Central Asia, from your home country, Uzbekistan. And I think also maybe, uh, Roland, I don't know if you want to say something about the light. Um, well, I can share the screen again and then we can uh, say a little bit more things about the details, but... Um... But overall, I also was hooked by yeah, this. Oh no! There's yeah. a guy. There's a guy who is really concerned. Yeah, he's really concerned. I and wasn't. I wasn't sure whether you wanted to be ironic, which is a, another very interesting tools and approach to using video, because of course, when you act, or if you want to act especially as we are not professional actors, it might be more fun <laughs> and perceived as funny or ironic. Okay. Yeah, Utkir, what do you think? This was a question. Oh uh, yeah, thank you for your comments. Um, yeah, the time was so limited and I did not have a chance to edit it. It was just like recording for for just uh, 45 yeah. seconds. So, and then, yeah, I think it is really good idea to be uh, as a, like, I really uh, like the comments of uh, Emanuele. I think uh, the, the main idea of vlogging is to attract uh, more attention. Uh, when we uh, write something, it is difficult to to keep the uh, audience with us because maybe only limited people with uh, focus on our research may stay with us, but it is difficult to involve the public. But uh, the lot, they have uh, this uh, advantage that uh, they can uh, they can attract everyone, right? So we can be as much creative as uh, we can. Uh, and I think also if you, as you say, if you want to attract people by telling a story with a short video, um, I think it's also important to recall, as uh, Roland said earlier, that stories are firstly and foremost about people and about change. And for instance, in this case, you have maybe direct experience of glaciers that are changing and eh? they're vanishing because you have been, mm, maybe the, you, you hike in the mountains in your country. So that's a story that you can tell instead I, because in the middle of your video, right, you give some um, information about how uh, water and why it's important for agriculture, for other activities. But you see, I cannot even remember exactly what you said, eh? because there I lost, I lost it a bit. I say, okay, yeah, we know that water is important for so many activities and I lost and I cannot remember what you said. Um, 
So maybe instead of that, uh, you could tell a story. My name is uh, Utkir, I come from Uzbekistan. I used to go every winter, I don't know, skiing, hiking. Uh, but now in the past five years, all the snow was artificial snow because or even, I think it's a really important what Emanuele says. It, if you make the video more personal, so for instance, if you would start with a picture of yourself standing in Uzbekistan and saying, well, normally you can see the glacier here, but today it's not, then you make the story way more personal and way more uh, tactic. You can feel it because now you in the middle part, you're going to give again a little bit of information about glaciers, but it's still, we try to feel the glaciers and we try to feel the retreat of the glaciers. So if you have one picture of yourself just standing there and say, I'm standing here on the, on the glacier, I'm doing this research because I really think it's important, then your whole story would already make more impact because it becomes more personal. So I think it's always very important also in, in if you make small vlogs, don't talk too general about things, and you didn't because you said, I really think it, something has to be happened, but make it more personal. And the more personal you make it, the more people will accept, uh, people will accept your vlog and also will accept technical problems or technical difficulties or whatever. So I think that's, uh, I thought, um, uh, Lucy, I didn't see your video yet. Uh, we had a video from Nick Volo, uh, Roland, in WhatsApp. Oh, oh, okay. Mine, I'm struggling to get it off my phone. It's just too big for me to send anywhere. So I've been trying to transfer it to my laptop and it's still not done. Okay. <laughs> okay, then we, uh, we have, I will download. I, I'm Nicola Volo. Download uh, Nick, Nicola, yes. This is a vlog by Nick. Okay, we, we'll share the screen. And um, see. Let's see. Yeah. And then we have uh, a video by Nick. Hi, I'm Nicola Volo. I'm a paleontologist and today I'm going to bring you to a very... You don't see it? Hi, I'm Nicola Volo. Stop share, you share. Okay, okay. there we go, Nick. Hi, I'm Nicola Volo. I'm a paleontologist and today I'm going to bring you to a very, very special place to show you the secret weapon that um, reptiles use to win the race to conquest land. The special place is my kitchen and the secret weapon is this one, an egg. Eggs were the key evolutionary step to conquest land. They have this protective layer that allows animals to reproduce fully on land. What does it mean? It means that they don't have to go back to water to lay their eggs because their eggs are protected against dehydration and some sort of predators by this shell. Hi, I'm Nicola Volo. It's okay. super nice, Nicola. <laughs> hey, where did you take Manuel go? Yeah, sorry, I'm just at, at home uh, in my creepy basement, so I couldn't, you know, use anything nice. But luckily, I, I was cooking my lunch and I used it. <laughs> Yeah, but that, we, re we really liked it, your video. So uh, let's start with Emanuele. He's always the critic here. <laughs> no, I really, I really enjoyed that because indeed there is some mystery. There's something that you want to know. 
why and how did they conquer land? So, and you see, I think you showed very well that every object uh, that you have that we have around uh, can tell a story as a story in its own. And we started this workshop when everyone was locked down uh, in, in this format uh, with Roland, when everyone was locked down in his uh, uh, room or house, but still eh, you, you can travel, you can tell story about so many things by picking up objects around you. So well done. Hmm? Yeah. I really liked it because uh, indeed this because the question is what is the story? The story starts with the hook and you uh, intrigued us in the beginning when how how uh, I'm going to take you to a special place and you think and then it's very surprising because the special place is your kitchen so that makes a very nice uh, uh, turnaround and you used the uh, and I like the first shot. I'm I'm a paleontologist, and you just looked up a little bit and showed a small drawing. So you, I think you really used a few of the simple objects around you. In you say it's my basement, but you used it and you you told a good story. So uh, I think uh, this is the whole idea that it doesn't that you don't need too much resources or whatever to tell already a basic story. And of course, if you have a little bit more time and do the, the camera movements a little bit better and the light a little bit better, it can be a little bit better. But basically, if you would share this with your friends or with people, they would think, oh yeah, interesting. I like to see the guy. <laughs> I like to hear his story and I like to see his presentation because so I really uh, liked it. And um, What do you think, uh, Nick? Yeah, well, um, thank you very much. Um, yes, I agree, of course, with the um, lighting and also the camera and everything. And also the script uh, should have been a bit um, uh, smoother because there were a couple of uh, times in which I stopped. Uh, but yeah, with a, with a bit more time, um, I think I can easily fix um this these issues um yeah and also of course yeah the lights and everything but i tried like turning the light on but it was like a sort of a big sun in the <laughs> in the kitchen so <laughs> yeah but uh, we really liked it because i you really showed uh this with a little bit of time with a little bit of uh, creativity and with a little bit of uh, fantasy you can make in a very short time, you can make a video and share and share it. And that's the whole idea of uh, also of this small workshop, just to stimulate people to do it and start doing it. So uh, I really liked it. Okay. There is a question in the chat, uh, Roland. So maybe you want to answer it before closing up. Okay, yeah. Uh, there is, if you want to edit your video on a, a phone, uh, there is a very good uh, software which is completely free and almost can do almost uh, everything, which is called CapCut. I put it in the chat, CapCut. CapCut is very good software to edit on your phone. And well, when it comes to editing on your computer or other, CapCut will work on your phone and it will work on any tablet and you can do almost everything with it. Basically CapCut is the editor from TikTok. <laughs> CapCut, CapCut is the editor from TikTok. But uh, Roland, I, which chat are you using? Because I don't see... Oh, I did put it in the chat here, in the <laughs> chat, but I can uh, also put it in the, in the WhatsApp. You should put it in the chat on Zoom, but send it to everyone. Oh, yeah, I did send it to, uh, yeah, okay, it's still on the wrong host and panel list. Yeah, I'm sorry, I did. Uh, oh. oh, yeah, that is true. It's kept good. And I think at this moment, it's uh, on your phone, it's working very well. I think uh, Catherine used it, eh? Um, no, I used, there was another free um, thing that we had on our work laptop, so I just uploaded to that. So actually, 
I would say I cheated a little bit because I did use a bigger software package. Oh. Oh, yeah. I should probably redo it on a phone and do it properly. Yeah, no, 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 it's of course. <laughs> but CapCut is very capable of doing short videos on your phone. It can do almost everything, stabilized videos, adding uh, subtitles to it. Uh, no, you cannot. No, that's the best, um, best thing on the phone. On, on, on laptops and Apple machines, it's a little bit more complicated to explain what... Uh, because there are a lot of different kinds of... If you have a little bit of budget, if you have a little bit of budget, I would use uh, uh, Adobe Rush. But it will cost you about uh, 10 euro a month. And the strange thing is people spend time, but the good thing about Rush is then it, you can edit on your phone and you can edit on your tablet and you can edit on your computer with the same uh, software and it even syncs between all those devices. So you can start editing on your phone and finishing editing on your uh, finishing editing on your laptop. And um, I think it, it, it works very good. And it's still easy software, but you have Especially on on uh, on laptops, you have very professional software for nothing. So, uh, so if you use something like DaVinci Resolve, for instance, that's uh, free software, and you can. Uh, it's also very professional. They make uh, large movies with it. So, um, I think we're going a little bit to the end, Lucy. I'm not getting anywhere with um, getting it off my phone. Yeah, but. Um, <laughs> But it's been really useful to see other people's and like get the comments. So it, and and just doing it was really useful. So thank you for that. Yeah, but I will uh, if you I will give you another link then. Um, one second. Um, no, it takes some time to find that link. Uh, but if you do it later, uh, because you can also use WeTransfer from your phone, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just my Wi-Fi is struggling a bit with having so many connections, so it's not, it's not allowing me to do much. Okay, but if you send it to me, I will still comment on it. Thank you. And because we keep the, the WhatsApp chat open, so you can, uh, you, you, we keep the WhatsApp open, and uh, I will put the videos, videos we have, I will put on Vimeo, and you can watch them there for inspiration. And if you add your video, I will, uh, will comment on it. So, um, and I like to see it, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, Nicola also said already, you can use DaVinci Resolve, yeah, but that DaVinci Resolve is really, if you want to go into video editing and really, because it's, it's very good software, but uh, <laughs> it takes a little bit of time to get the, the hang of it. Uh, it's a little bit, so uh, in, if you're a beginner, I, uh, I'm not recommending it, but if you really want to go into making videos, it's a very good, uh, very good option. And of course, if you are on a Mac, uh, just using iMovie is already a very good start to uh, to do some editing. I think we're about to come to an end. Huh? Uh, yes, uh, definitely. I have to go because in five minutes I have another lecture starting here uh, at IG Delft. But uh, I would like to thank all the um, participants who stayed till the very end for your video, for your consideration. I think as Lucy said, indeed, uh, watching other people making video, making yourself video and learning, commenting on each other and getting feedback is probably the best and also the funnest, the, the most fun way to, to learn. Uh, so I um, put in the chat the link to a blog post in which we present the, um, the last edition of a summer course that with Roland and Juliette, we organized uh, two years ago before uh, the pandemic uh, here in Delft. It's a course called Visual uh, Video Storytelling for Water Communication. And finally this year, we are back, so if you want to learn more, you can also uh, perhaps think of joining 
uh, that uh, summer course, which is about water communication, but uh, not only, uh, of course, and it's also open to external participants, not only to our students. Yeah, and it, you have to say it's first week of August and a full- First week of August. Full, full live, five days. And indeed, we will shoot. And we shoot quite a lot of videos then, and it's a lot of fun because uh, it's a very international uh, training with people from all over the world. So some time for uh, final questions. Um, is anybody wants to give a final comment, final questions, final? Thank you for joining. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. And hope to see you soon. <laughs>